How's it going? Brett here, Perth, Western Australia. Just wish to quickly talk about a subject why at the moment I have stopped going to church. Like, in my whole life I've never fitted in at church. And that many churches I have gone to, eventually something happens and basically I can't be bothered putting up with um, the garbage that goes on. But that should not be the case. And it's pretty sad that um, church these days, that I do believe that probably half of Christians actually go to church anymore. And there are multiple reasons for this. But it is sad that pastors, you know, do not have the fear of God in them or understand what God wants from them. You know, that, um, you know, it's all about shepherding and loving people. I also say that there are many, this church I just last went to and I gave it a good um, try, I try to meet people, talk to the stranger as Jesus says to do, and everybody was so introverted. And it's pretty sad these days that people can no longer communicate. Um, and we are meant to love each other. The Bible talks about to encourage one another. So how can you encourage each other when you don't talk to anybody? You've got to talk to encourage. When Jesus sent his disciples out in twos to those towns, that these people had to go and talk to people, talk about the kingdom of God. But I'm going to just share my little um, story of church life. Um, as I said, I first, um, this guy come to my place, an old friend, said, you've got to come to church, this home group. I wasn't a church person. And, and for weeks he kept at me and I finally went just to shut him up, so to speak. But at the time, I was falsely accused of stealing um, these wedding rings. Someone had pointed the finger uh, my way, and she also got a psychic who described me. And that's not good. I was 16. This is over 20 years ago now. And um, and I was tricked into a house, and she even pulled out a big axe handle. No axe on the end, but a big axe handle, and says, Who do you want, the police or Jeff? This guy, Jeff. And... And I said, ring the police. And she goes, tough luck, I'm ringing Jeff. And she tried to ring Jeff. I had my friend who distracted her and I jumped out the window and I was frightened, I was 16. And actually stopped, um, you know, going to school for six months. I did not leave my house. It actually scared me stupid. And this is when I accepted Jesus on this Friday night that literally when I prayed to Jesus that um, the rings turned up literally 7.30 on the Friday night and somehow I remember that was the time I was praying my first prayer to Jesus and that was my first um, God experience that he is the God of the Bible and the God who delivers but like um, even cults have this practice that um, at the start of the church experience it was good you felt loved and that but then they just cut you off they just cut you and I heard there's a tactic called bomb um, love bombardment that they'll get you in love you and then bang they think oh yeah you're right and that's it, but it's pretty sad that that's the case because the world does not act like that. There's this, even this guy who was in a gang and he left the gang, got Jesus, and but he stopped going to church and he asks why and he goes, I thought it'd be more like the gang where you hung out more, that you care for each other more, etc. And anyhow, during this time, that this crazy guy befriended me. He started talking about... Um, looking in a mirror and saying Papa Jesus three times Jesus may appear he said about um, the moon and the women's cycles being 28 days and all crazy stuff and I even used to carry a knife with me because he told me he got molested by priests um, and all this stuff so I was starting to get wary of him and then one night he said if you tell anyone what I told you that there's seven the lamp stands in the book Revelation with the seven candle holders, whatever they are, means I can burn down your house. You know, that's what he said. So that was my first bad negative experience. And I left going to church at that point of time. And it's funny that I met up with a pastor, a youth pastor who I was with at the time years later in Perth. He was visiting. No, this was in Brisbane and met him in Perth. I had moved there. And, and he even judged me and said, oh, you know, um, for what happened, he doesn't know what happened and that's another example of loving people and caring for people you just do not know the real story to what happens to people and that's where God is, Jesus loves unconditionally and Christians are flat out loving each other unconditionally there's, um, you know, if you've got different doctrine 
and all different reasons you can't even get along there's not even enough love for a fellow church person at another denomination so I was pretty heartbroken by that a bit um, and that's where I doubted my faith in 95 I even said this pastor how do I know that God is true and I had this um, God experience um, this pastor says I'll ask Jesus if he is true and when he said that I remember my thoughts to this day thinking oh yeah as if um, you know God can prove that he's true which is funny half funny because God can God can do all things and he does and it has for many people and my experience like in the Bible talks about um, this water that flows out from God's throne that you know it's like this river of living water and I was in church but I do not remember leaving I was at the lights and I was literally feeling an invisible water on me literally feeling it um, you know and it blew my mind because I was not imagining it I 100% knew and it stayed on me like for three days um, and it just blew my mind I was riding my bike going oh wow God I did not know you were that real so anybody out there this is how I know he is the God of the Bible and who he says he is and I even had that experience about two weeks later he did it again for me because he is the God of the Bible in the Bible this King Nebuchadnezzar and other people when they see God do things like we're in our little world where is God where are these miracles but when you experience something you do go wow um, he is God and he is you know the one true one but my church life hasn't been all that successful gone to churches never fitted in and if you don't fit in and be accepted and loved by others and have proper um, relationships you do fade away everybody does and the church is flat out doing this basic thing where it is the second commandment why isn't the second commandment um, you know with us Christians um, focused on more and it's not and what I get with pastors like the blessed you know you, I could ask God for 10 million dollars but I swear the most blessed person another person with Christian families and parents siblings and friends I don't care if you don't have that you really got nothing almost and that's my story that I do have nothing almost um, yeah so where was I going with this yeah just about so these people do have all this love and support but there's a lot of us out there that don't have Christian um, family flat out finding Christian friends and coming across other idiots who say they're going to church but they want to argue or whatever and hurt your feelings but why you know if we're the love love does not hurt you know and just over Bible scriptures that's why Paul says do not argue against the Bible so in my life I've lived in Perth lived in Brisbane lived in Perth and lived in Brisbane swap that around I've got the order back to France Brisbane Perth Brisbane Perth and but I've never fitted in at church and my last stint I've just been discouraged I've left because um, I was saying oh what's the point what is the point God you know and I'm called to be an evangelist I don't know if it's ever going to happen um, you know I put my life on hold I've been a bit disappointed in my in things in the last um, I don't know year or so like even like a year and a half ago that the Lord with this prophetic gift he gave me I got this blood test and um, the Lord touched me like I could look at things it's hard to explain I get these two things that happen to me and then there was these ads before the ads come on I'm watching this TV and the Lord goes Zhoom, like that and it's a cancer ad and the thing and my latest blood test and dealing with doctors if you're in the public system you know but they gave me all this test um, and it's left out or oh, blood cancer is um, not ruled out and I've had these pains in the bone and I'm just sick of dramas you know I've been like that's why I've been miffed at God's thinking oh why does it all got to be this hard you know and I've been you know not feeling a hundred percent and so I'm supposed to be an evangelist I said I had um, a failed marriage um, my wife wasn't a hundred percent honest with me I had a condition when I was younger my um, spleen was killing my red blood cells I thought I had leukemia then but it's only that this isn't this then um, I'm not diagnosed with anything at the moment it's a long story of that I still like the Lord told me it is and that doesn't matter because the Lord showed me I'm gonna live old but that's why I said stuff it you know I've just had enough and but the Lord still claims I'm gonna be this evangelist he says feed the world you know 
But, oh, as I say, I do it all myself. That's how I feel. The Lord is always with us. When I when I say that statement, I'm referring to God, or should I say church? And, um, yeah, you know, so I just thought I'd let that out to why I don't go to church. I want to. I, I want to go to church and be a part. I want to be used and valued. And I do say this much, like when people say, oh, I want to be used by God, I say, well, do it. Jesus says to feed the hungry, clothe the naked, welcome the strangers. That is being used by God. Use your own initiative. Because Jesus with the coin parable, don't think a more gifted person is less valuable because you've only got one coin. Because if you do nothing with your one coin, God and Jesus are going to call you a wicked, lazy person and get, get out of my house, he's going to say. But the thing is, with the parable, it says a person had one um, coin, one person had two, the other had five. The person with two put it to work, the other one had five, but the one with one did nothing with it. And that can be you at church. You know, you may not have any gifts, but God has given you your mouth and a little bit of initiative, and you can go and start, you know, showing God why you deserve gifts. And this is where um, the church misses the do with gifts and moving of the spirit as they like to call it um they think you get anointed and it's for no reason you could you know but it's for shepherding god is looking for shepherds david was a shepherd moses was a shepherd you look at the get a concordance look at the word shepherd um jesus said feed my sheep the peter and do we have a bigger picture you know, do we have a bigger picture of everybody, your impact upon others, society's impact, the church's impact? You know, nobody seems to have this bigger picture. And like the Hillsong Church, man, it's just pathetic. Like, it's all about control. Like, as I said, like, it's all about fear because as soon as you start bowing down to the money, that's what you're going to bow down to. And it's all about, oh, you know, they might have a $30 million budget. You know, I'm not saying they don't, but then it becomes, oh, gee, if we go too extreme, we may lose that budget, but that does not matter because Jesus says, if you lose your salt, what worth is anything, you know? And this is where these uh, mega churches, and I do believe in preaching milk, but also believe in preaching meat, and these conferences have got to stop. These pastors have got, um, like I was seeing in America, and I know some over here that charge twenty or thirty thousand just to make a weekend appearance. And the biggest, one of the biggest Baptist churches in America, this dude is like him and his mates. They got this conference thing going around. We've got to have the conference, and they pay each other like twenty grand. So he goes his conference, he gets twenty grand. He comes here, gets his twenty grand, and it's just not right this is on top of your salary and it's become a con and with the churches they want to justify this because all the others do it that doesn't make it all right so you're going to go to jesus oh well he did it but jesus says because the bottom line is this that everybody has got knowledge of good and evil in the heart you know you do not need the bible you know that um in the because when adam gay ate that fruit we inherited the knowledge of good and evil. So we already deep down know what good and evil is. And it's reflected by with, with what you hide. So if you start um, confronting these people, oh, what about these $20,000 you're getting? And they're all running away from the reporters. Well, no, because you know you're doing wrong. And you would not be running away if you were not doing wrong. That's just an example. So anyhow, God bless you. I'm going to do a little bit on that. Thanks.